I have said many times that an electoral commission can make the best preparations possible for an election. But if the external environment is not right, the prospect for a free and fair election can be likened to washing a piece of white cloth in milky water and hoping that it will not be stained. Unfortunately, several aspects of our elections are unacceptable because of murky factors in the external environment. And I want to call attention to four of them. First, violence. Some people say that violence in our election did not start yesterday. No. But instead of decreasing over the years, it appears to be increasing in both numbers and intensity. If our two major political parties are to be believed, they no longer have militias. If they are to be believed. But what is even more worrying is the allegation of the involvement of national security personnel in election violence. I'm afraid this is very serious and foreboding for our democracy. Two, disrespect for other candidates. Instead of mutual respect for other candidates seeking the same office, the tendency has been to show open disrespect for the other candidate and try by any means, fair or foul, to portray him or her as unworthy of the office. Oftentimes, the same attitude is portrayed by the supporters of the respective candidate. In such an atmosphere, political campaigning loses its essence as an opportunity for candidates to tell voters what policies they will put in place to solve their problems and improve their conditions of life. Three, too many promises. In place of enunciating policies, our politicians spend a lot of time making and repeating promises to the electorate. One cannot be sure that even the politicians themselves believe that they can fulfill the, the numerous promises that they make. Anyway, they seem to forget that unfulfilled promises can be a millstone around a politician's neck. The negative effects can be devastating because even party members who were not part of the promise-making enterprise may find it difficult to extricate themselves from the effects. Four, vote buying. In days gone by, whatever vote buying or vote selling there was took place in secrecy. Not so these days. What we have now looks like an open market where candidates can freely buy votes and citizens can freely sell their votes in broad daylight, while we all look on seemingly unconcerned. But it is a shameful spectacle, because vote buying and vote selling are unlawful, and they undermine two important principles 
that underpin our democracy. Vote buying undermines the idea that we choose our leaders out of our free will. And vote selling undermines the idea that we hold our elected leaders accountable through elections. I believe that our democracy is kaput when election results cease to be a true representation of our verdict on the performance of our leaders. And we cannot therefore hold them accountable through elections. And that precisely is what the emerging open market in votes portends. I'm sure that there are other factors about our elections that you may consider to be unsatisfactory. But the ones I have mentioned are enough to indicate that all is not well with our democracy. In fact, there are additional signs of the deconsolidation of our democracy.